I was somebody who has ADHD. I have learning disabilities. That wasn't discussed when I was a child. Those were things that we weren't talking about. I also have ADHD. I work part-time in a clinic that specializes in treating ADHD. And I'm very curious. I always find it amazing how people get to a place where you're at. Mm -hmm. And I think I'm inspired by you and and sort of all the work you've managed Mm -hmm. to do, knowing kind of how hard it is to sit down and do writing and and academic work is difficult. So how did you, or what have you done to help with the ADHD side of things? Yeah, it's a really great question. Yeah. Yeah, And uh, I can share with you, I think, um, I believe that ADHD manifests very differently from different people and Mm -hmm. for different people, Mm -hmm. depending on our lived experience. And what I mean by that is we can have like similar symptoms, yet how we feel them or how it impacts us might look different. So one of the things that I learned very early on once I was, you know, formally diagnosed was my, my hyper-focus actually could be an asset when I learned how to use it correctly. Now, I think often when we think about ADHD, we think of that distractibility. But in my case, it's almost as if it's more like a time blindness. So I can start doing a task and I could miss all of the cues that says, okay, Robin, it's time to move on to the other task. And I can stay really tunnel focused in these places and spaces. So once I started to learn, how do I use that to actually help me work towards my academic pursuits? And I'll give you an example. So When I went into, when I started my graduate work at the time, I already had my first child and I would have these little windows where I would have childcare, which meant I could get all my course reading and my writing done, but I would only have these four hour blocks. And so it was literally like shut everything down. My little guy was looked after and then four hours, it was just hyper focus. And I was able to do like a day plus amount of work Mm -hmm. in those four hours because that's all that I had to work with. So it was learning strategies and techniques on how to use some of those kind of parts of our ADHD, which sometimes can be misunderstood to like actually learn how to harness it to help us meet our goals. Wow. Were those self-developed? Did you have guidance from therapy or doctors or like, how did you figure out those strategies? Because it wasn't until I started, I guess, doing therapy for people with ADHD specifically that I even started treating parts of my own ADHD with some of those strategies. But yeah, how did you figure those things out? Good question. Again, uh, so for me, it was it was mostly through active discovery. It was like figuring out what was working, what wasn't working, right. and really starting to. I re- I recall years ago um, working with a, a coach, and it was actually around like physical pursuits, so it wasn't around mm-hmm. academic pursuits. But I was training for a marathon, and I remember my coach asking me, you know, Robin, when do you feel the most effective? to be able to do this training? Like when are those kind of peak windows where you feel as though like, yes, this is where I feel like I can get this training in. And I remember just almost taking that question, like and generalizing it out broadly to think, okay, when am I the most effective at my job? When am I the most effective as a parent, as a partner, as a daughter? And some of the kind of patterns that I learned through that kind of reflection was as long as I found some type of an activity that I could essentially like really get that hyper focus, I found mm-hmm. afterwards, I felt really kind of like I had capacity to manage my days better. Mm-hmm. So what that kind of translated into is realizing like I really needed to have a solid morning routine. Like if I could have a really solid morning routine and I could be consistent I got the guesswork out of, do I feel like doing it this morning? Which I don't think we ever feel like doing the good things for ourselves in the morning, but it just became a a discipline of knowing that when I do these like really kind of standardized or like these really solid practices consistently, the benefits compounded. And then I realized I was, it was easier to manage my day as it unfolded. And totally curious question. Are you familiar with Cal Newport's work? No, I, I've heard no, the name, okay. but I haven't. Oh, have you? Okay, go have, yeah. He, yeah, it's been very helpful for me as like yeah. a time block calendar workbook yes. kind of thing. And, and anyway, it's just that in the realm of how do you protect ourselves from getting distracted and, yeah. and set aside the time. 